It's time to smile. Peter Van Steeden and the Ipana Troubadours playing I'm Nobody's Baby. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we take you to Madame Lazonga's School of Dance, where manager Bud Abbott is trying to make an easy mark of Lou Costello. And here they are, the stars of our show, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. <laughs> Step right in, folks. Madame Lazanga's School of Dance. Six easy lessons, 50 beautiful hostesses. Say there, neighbor. How would you like to dance with the pretty girls? Oh, not me, kid. I just had a terrible accident. No. Yeah, my car upset. Mm. And if I don't turn it over, my wife is going to be mad at me. Well, why, why don't you dance with the pretty girls first? Then you can turn your car over. Oh, no. i got to do it now, or my wife won't like it. Look, I'll explain it to your wife. Where is she? She's under the car. Oh, my goodness. Where did the accident happen? Hey. See that car across the street? Right across the street? Yeah. See that wreck over there? Yes. Is that your car? No, that's my wife. Uh, your wife? Yeah. The car is the one with my wife's dress wrapped around it. Oh, I see. Fits perfectly, don't it? Look, wait a minute. Look, if you had an accident, why didn't you call a policeman? Why didn't I call a policeman? Yes. Because I hit one. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you mean you hit a policeman in a uniform? No, I hit him in a patrol car. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did he uh, recognize you? Well, what'd you say? Could he swear to you? Yeah, he could swear to me, and I sweared right back at him. Well, you shouldn't have done that. You should speak softly to a policeman. I did, but he heard me. Quiet now. Look, all right, I'll tell you what to do. Step right in and meet Madame Lazanga. But be careful how you talk. She's very hoity-toity. Hey, is that her over there? That's her. She may be hoity, but she'll never see toity again. <laughs> ah, Mademoiselle, I kiss your hand. Oh, such a warm kiss. Why does it burn me so? I forgot to take the cigar out of my mouth. <laughs> ah, madame, you have beautiful hands. Beautiful hands. Gorgeous, they're just like pedals. Rose pedals? Nah, bicycle pedals. Nah, nah, yes, Now, madame is uh, ready to teach you uh, La Conga. Yes, come let me put my arm around your waist like these. Oh, oh, oh. Oh! Now, wait, oh. wait a minute, neighbor. Oh. Uh, wait a minute. Are you getting a trifle emotional? Emotional nothing. She's standing on my foot. Uh, <laughs> Get off. I thought you told me she could do the laconga. Oh, certainly. But usually when I do laconga, I wear a native sash around my waist. Size 48, ain't it? Yeah, how did you know? I used to put the saddle on war red mode. No, 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 no. Come here. She's peeved. I know, She's look, peeved. Now, look. These lessons are 10 cents each or three for a dollar. How about it? Okay. All right. Well, I'm no sucker. Come on, I'll take the tree for a dollar. Give me the dollar. Okay. There you, there you are. are. All set. Right. All set for the first lesson. Are you ready? Right. Position. Music. <laughs> Lesson's over. <laughs> what kind of lesson was that? Now, don't get excited. Now, uh, lesson number two. Uh, are you ready? Position. Music. <laughs> Costello, you dance divinely. I'm not even out of the first position yet. I dance divinely. You heard the lady. You should see me when I get a chance to use my yellow foot. All right. <laughs> Look, neighbor, what do you want to do? Tire yourself out. Ah, who's getting tired? Come on, will you? I want to do some dancing or something. You, I know, but you shouldn't get tired of these Look, things. You should, you should like this. You said, music, the band went ta 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 plunk. Over. Oh, oh, oh. I hate you and Vince I see. All right, the band wins. Ta, ta, ta. Yeah, I heard it. I well, heard that'll it. be a dollar extra. For what? For listening to the music. Oh. Look, what do you want me to do? 
You want me to pay for the guy's union card? Now, wait a minute. That's a fine remark to make. You come to my dancing school, I furnish a wonderful orchestra, I give you the benefit of Madame Lazanga's time and talent, and when it's all over, you can't even lift a foot off the floor. Oh, I'm a wallflower. Now you're telling me. I'm a bad boy. Well, why don't you do something about it? I did. I just wrote myself a nasty letter. Yeah? What did you say in it? I won't know till I get it tomorrow. (laughs) Well, you should be... You should be spanked to impress your mistakes on your mind. Don't you think that's going about it in a roundabout way? Oh, come on. What's the use of talking to you? You're dizzy. I think I am. Yeah, I know it. I don't know what's happening to me. I wonder. I'm getting awful dizzy. What do you mean? I'm getting spells. Spells? Spells? Just the other day, I walked into the World's Fair. I went in the place and everything swam before my eyes. Where did this happen? At the Aquacade. Oh. Oh, Benet, Benet Venuta, before you sing your first song, will you come over here a minute, please? Well, certainly, Harry. What for? Well, I just thought that since none of our listeners can see how lovely you are, if I could just tell them what you look like, then when you sang... Yeah, they, they... could quick hide the children so they wouldn't be frightened out of a night's sleep. Oh, no, no. Wait, don't you go getting modest on my hands, Benet. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Venuta's attractive figure tonight is sporting a very nice-looking outfit. Harry, it's not worth talking about. Oh, yes, it is. Well, yes. then it's thanks to my dressmaker. Uh, yeah, well, all right. The Benet also has a very, well, very cute hairdo. Thanks to my hairdresser. And she has a very attractive smile. Thanks to Ipana toothpaste and massage. And Harry, that's something really worth talking about. Yes, well, enough people are talking about Ipana Benet and using it to make it the largest selling toothpaste in America today. And the reason for that popularity, ladies and gentlemen, is just as plain as the nose on my face. A winning smile, the kind of a smile we all want, depends not only upon sparkling teeth, but upon firm, healthy gums as well. And the creamy, well-cooked foods we eat nowadays do not give our gums the work they need to keep them firm and healthy. So they often become soft and more susceptible to trouble. That's why so many dentists suggest massage with Ipana toothpaste. Just follow this easy, modern routine. Every time you brush your teeth with Ipana toothpaste, put a little extra Ipana on your brush or your fingertip and massage it on your gums. In that way, you help promote firm, healthy gums as well as sparkling, lustrous teeth. And you do it with the toothpaste so many dentists use themselves. For in the 1940 National Survey, it was found that Ipana is personally used by twice as many dentists as any other dental preparation, paste, powder, or liquid. Now make their choice your choice. Start massaging with Ipana toothpaste tomorrow. Our lovely singing star, Benet Venuta, steps to the microphone to give us her own interpretation of St. Louis Blues. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, last week, Abbott and Costello formed the Wackyville Film Company and presented their first effort, The Life of Daniel Boone. Tonight, we present their second colossal flop, a swashbuckling saga of the high seas entitled Christopher Columbus, with Lou Costello as Christopher Columbus, Bud Abbott as Vespucius, Benet Venuta will play the queen, I will play the king, and Peter Van Steeden will play the ace. <laughs> We need hardy sailors to make this pearl voyage to America. Seamen, seamen, step forward and state your experience. King's fleet, naval base. Captain Kidd's pirates, marine base. A Brooklyn Dodgers, third base. All right. <laughs> Columbus, Columbus, stop fooling. Now, if you're going to discover America, we've got to get started. Did you get any information from the Bureau of Navigation? No, sir. I kept asking the guy what kind of weather we was going to have for sailing. And all the guy kept saying hello to another guy that wasn't even there. Uh, what are you talking about? He kept saying to another, he kept saying, Hi, a Tide. You know there's nobody around named Tide. Oh, no, no, no. The man meant Tide was high. All right, so Tide was high. The guy will sober up in the morning. Uh, look, I'm, try I'm trying to find out about weather conditions. Suppose you're, you're 200 miles out to sea. What happens if you run into a squall? Suppose we're 200 miles out of sea, yeah. we run into a squall. Yes. Yeah. How are you going to run into a, 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 an Indian's wife in the middle of the ocean? No, 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 you don't understand. You know what I'm worried about? Why? Octopuses. Octopuses? Yeah, that's a fish with eight faces. How do you figure that out? Well, octo is eight. Yes. And a puss is a puss. Oh, come on, please. That's enough, Costello. I mean, Columbus. Uh, it's the king. It's the king? It's the king. Uh-oh, I better hide. Last night I sneaked into the king's castle before the drawbridges was up. And the king's mad about it. Why, why should he be mad? I caught him with his bridges down. All right, sit quiet. <laughs> quiet, Costello. I mean, Columbus. Uh, here's the king. Huh? So you're Columbus. Yes, sir. I've heard about you. You're in love with my wife. Every night you've been coming to my queen and asking her to let you press your suit. That's a lie. I only asked her to wash a couple of my shirts. Wait a minute. You asked the queen to wash your shirts? Yes, sir. Queen is a beller of Castile. Yes, sir. What happened? No soap. <laughs> That's you. You're not. Irregardless. Here, <laughs> Nevertheless, Christopher Columbus, as captain of the Castilian Navy, I'm going to make you my first mate. You're going to make me your first mate? I am, yes. Oh, Kenny, I'm going to be your first mate. Are you sure you won't get tired of me? Bosh! I thought that was going to be much better. We all thought so. Well, I must be getting back to my palace to look over an important paper. But, Your Majesty, what, why are you so anxious to look over some paper? I gotta see how Dick Tracy's coming out with the Yogi Yama. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh the yeah, Queen! The Queen! Hey, Abbott, what? give me a rock. Quiet! <laughs> That's the Queen! What a beautiful voice. She sings like a bird. What kind of a bird? A stool pigeon. <laughs> Chrissy, who you hissing? That's me. Hey, Queen Izzy. Come here. Ah, oh, tonight, Queen Izzy, you are glamorous. What makes you so beautiful? Well, every day I bathe in milk. Do you mind if I ask you something personal? What? How do you get in a bottle? <laughs> Oh, Christopher, I brought you my jewels. Here's my platinum coronet, my diamond rings, my sapphire brooch, my emerald bracelets, my pearl necklace. Ah, gee whiz. I swear to God, Christopher, Christopher, why are you crying? I want a Mickey Mouse wristwatch. Oh, Christopher, don't cry. I want to remember you as a gay, brave adventurer. Before you go, let us have one last dance. Okay, kid. <laughs> Oh, come on. Get out of here. Come on, Columbus. Behave yourself, Columbus. If you're going to discover America, we'd better hurry. The barometer's falling. Well, pick it up and let's get going. All right, come on. Pull up that anchor. Okay. Uh, wait a minute, hey. And stop throwing your clothes through that porthole. Porthole? Yes. I thought it was a little clock. No, no, no. Hey, Abbott. What? What are all those guys Vestucious. over there? Vespucius. Oh, Vespucius. Yes. What are all those guys over there working on in the shipyard? That's a hull of a boat. You're telling me. <laughs> Working on. Four days later. Columbus, four days out and we're making wonderful time. Hey, Abbott, how many miles an hour does this boat go? She doesn't go miles, she goes nuts. How do you like that? 
of all the boats I got to discover America, I got to pick one that goes nuts. No, 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 no. No, nuts, nuts uh, are nautical miles. If you ask a sailor how fast the boat is going, he won't tell you miles. No. He'll say nuts. And I'll say nuts right back to no, him. No, 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 no. Was he a fresh guy? No, keep quiet. This is a wonderful boat. It has nice sleeping quarters, a fine dining room. And a... Did you get a look at the officer's mess? No, I didn't see anybody's wife on board. No. <laughs> Maybe she's in the front of the boat. Columbus, you mean forward. Forward is in the front of the boat. Aft is in the back. The starboard is on the side. Now, where's the port? In a bottle in the icebox. You're a fine sailor to send out to discover America. What would you do if you woke up in the middle of the night and found the boat leaking? What would I do if I found a boat leaking? Yes. In the middle of the night? Yes. I'd put a pen under it and go back to bed. No, 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 no. Here, let's put it this way. Suppose there's a hole in the side of the boat. A hole in the side of the boat. Now, get it right. And the water's rushing in. What would you do? I'd bore a hole in the other side and let it rush out. Ah. October 12th, 1492. The intrepid navigator Columbus lands in America where he is greeted by the Indians. Uh, hello, Chief. I'm Vespucius. I want to buy, uh, I want to buy some land. Hey, Abbott. What? If I was you, don't buy any of this dirt around here. Why? It's no good. What do you mean it's no good? It's got worms in it. Oh, come on. Talk sense. We're over here to get land. Okay, Chief. Tell me what I want to do. I want to buy Manhattan Isle. How much? Is that your line? Oh, excuse me. Okay. I'll pay you $24. So? I'll also give you a bottle of rum. Uh, what is bottle of rum for? Brooklyn. Peter Van Steeden and the I Pan of Troubadours bring us the title song from the Broadway success Louisiana Purchase. The Whack of the Week. Once again, we come to that part of the program wherein Messrs. Abbott and Costello interview the mental giants of our time. Each week, we bring to our listeners a unique personality, someone whose creative ideas are richly deserving of public acclaim. Tonight's genius is a woman, a style creator, whose radical ideas on women's clothes threaten to revolutionize the world of fashion. She is the author of the book, Pui on Fashion. And here she is, Miss Nancy Barton. Good evening, Miss Barton. Uh, you know, Mr. Costello has uh, told me that uh, you, your book, your very book is very helpful. Oh, really? But, Mr. Costello, my book is for women. How could it possibly be helpful to you? Well, I've got a short leg on my kitchen table, and your book just fits under it. All right, now, quiet. Uh, uh, make now, no, never mind. Uh, Miss Barton, would you mind telling us some of your ideas on women's clothes? Oh, no, not at all, not at all. Uh, too many women are like sheep. They copy dresses of debutantes and other celebrities without regard to their own personality. Now, this fails to express individuality and frequently results in poor color harmony. Color harmony? What's that? It's very simple, Mr. Costello. For instance, if you were carrying a pink handbag, you wouldn't wear a green dress, now, would you? Oh, I wouldn't dare. Heaven forbid. What would the neighbors say? <laughs> Why, I'd be the laughing stock of my sewing circle. Mr. Costello. <laughs> you mean you belong to a sewing circle? Oh, yes. I just whipped up a swell dress for my wife. Uh, Costello, you made the dress yourself? 
Without having your wife with you? Yeah. How did you guess her size? Oh, I tried it on a beer barrel. <laughs> yes, I did. And then I took it home and I put on my wife. Yes, and how did it look? It looked better on the beer barrel. <laughs> Well, uh, what kind of a dress was it? I uh, mean, was it satin? Satin? It looked like somebody slept in it. <laughs> well, um, from what you say, I take it Mrs. Costello is just a little overweight. A little overweight? <laughs> Listen, when Abbott gets on a scale, it says 135. When I get on a scale, it says 189. When my wife gets on a scale, it says one at a time. One at a time. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Costello, where does she have all this extra weight? Well, if the bustle ever comes back, she won't have to buy one. <laughs> well, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry, Mr. Costello, but I'm afraid your wife wouldn't look good in any kind of a dress. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Red. Why, when she wears... <laughs> when she wears a sleeveless gown, people admire her. They stand up and cheer. Now, that's ridiculous. Why should people stand up and cheer when they see your wife in a sleeveless gown? She's got an American flag tattooed on her arm. All right. <laughs> uh, Mr. Costello, your wife must be very patriotic. I'll say she is. She's got another tattoo on her back, a map of North America. Every time she takes a deep breath, Mexico joins the Union. <laughs> Well, I'll uh, forget your wife. Uh, Miss Barton, I understand that you, uh, you recently designed a sensational costume called uh, Futuristic Fantasy, which is to be exhibited at the World's Fair, am I right? Yes, you're quite right. It throws all convention to the winds. You see, I took one of my models and I covered her with a veritable splurge of color. One dress and hat are rainbow color. Now, one shoe is blue and the other is yellow. The left side of her hair is dyed green while the right side is purple. It's remarkable. Have you ever seen anything like that, Costello? Not since I gave up drinking. <laughs> No, no, no. It doesn't look as bad as it sounds. It's really a dream. A dream? Mm -hmm. Don't kid me, lady. That's a nightmare. In technicolor. Now, furthermore, the hat is quite chic. It has three roses with a ribbon on the side. <laughs> Could you think of anything more attractive? Yeah, four roses with a chaser on the side. <laughs> That's even more attractive for men. Especially if he's a musician. All right, all Especially right. if he's in Van yes. Steeden's well, band. All right, we'll forget Especially that. if he's Van yeah, Steeden. Well, all right, never mind. Especially if he's Van. Yes, yes. Especially if. Yes. Especially. All right, now. Uh, I ain't got any more. All right, well, keep quiet. We're supposed to be discussing clothes. Okay. Miss Barton, what do you think I ought to wear at a dinner party tomorrow night? Well, now, that depends. Uh, is it a catered affair? I mean, is it being arranged by a caterer? Well, a what? A uh, caterer. Look, when we had that party at my house last week, who supplied the food? Salvation Army. <laughs> Hello, if this party you're going to is informal, you can wear your tweed. Why, sure. I, I can wear my what? Your tweed, Costello. Your tweed. I think you're tweed, too. No. <laughs> Kiss me. Now, never mind that. Now, let's get back to Miss Barton. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, Mr. Abbott, there are other things besides clothes that contribute to the charm of a woman. For instance, my lady must be careful to choose a perfume in keeping with her personality. Uh, Mr. Costello, does your wife like things scented? No, she just has them wrapped up, carries them home herself. <laughs> I am mm -hmm. talking about perfume, Shorty. <laughs> <laughs> Every woman has a favorite brand. Uh, you think your wife would care for my sin? No, ma'am, she don't care what you do. No, no. <laughs> my sin is perfume. All right, some people's is drinking, some is gambling, so your sin is perfume. No, no, no. If I was you, I wouldn't go around bragging about it. Look, talk sense, please. My sin is an expensive perfume, but my wife likes Cody Sheep. What a coincidence. My wife likes McGarrett's goat. <laughs> McGarrett's goat? Oh, I have never been so insulted. As far as I'm concerned, this interview is at an end. Yes, there you are. There you are, you see. Miss Barton walked out on it. And there's thousands of women listening in who expected to get styled. That's Information right. on That's style. That's all right, Abbott. From now on, I'll take care I'm going to tell the women all over the nation what to wear. You better. Ladies, dear, dear ladies, have you lost your ump? Is your husband cold to you because you have no allure? He is the rat. But I'll tell you what to do. Go out and buy yourself a bleary flero. And a chick little hat trimmed with panting petunias and drooping daisies. Next, put a dab of perfume behind each ear. Personally, I prefer canal number five. <laughs> and after that, have your nails done over in the latest color. A gruesome green. 
Then when you're looking your best and you're just adorable and fascinating, <laughs> send for me. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may, I'd like to ask a question. Oh, no, you don't. It... You don't ask me any questions. Oh, I beg your pardon. Who are you, sir? I am a victim. That's what I am. A victim of quiz programs. Oh. Every time I go to see a radio show, somebody shoves a microphone under my nose and starts asking me questions. What's your name? What do you do? All I do is answer. I'm tired of it. Tonight, I'm going to ask a few questions. What's your name? Harry Von Zell. What do you do? Well, I try to make people understand how much sal hepatica will help them when... What's sal hepatica? It's a famous sparkling saline you should take any time and every time you need a laxative. Why? Well, simply because it helps you feel better faster. You see, sal hepatica is a quick-acting laxative, yet it's very gentle. And besides, it also helps counteract excess gastric acidity. Chases that sickish feeling fast. Well, I guess you've answered all my questions. Yes, and you'll find that sal hepatica will ideally answer almost everyone's question as to what laxative to take. So get a bottle of Sal Hepatica from your druggist and see how much faster you feel better when you take gentle, quick-acting Sal Hepatica. Hey, young fellow with that sour-looking foot. Now, please don't pick on me, Benet. All right, Harry, but must you stand there with that sour-looking foot? Well, I have had an awful day. Well, what happened? Well, I wrecked my car this morning. The coffee burnt my tongue. Aww. The bank called me for money, and my nerves are all unstrung. Shame. The laundry ruined my Palm Beach suit. A neighbor stole my bumper suit, and it rained. It rained? <laughs> yeah, it rained. Oh, Harry, stop uh. hiding behind a pillow. Whenever the dawn looks gray, get up, get up, and meet the sun halfway. There may be a fortune waiting, or maybe an egg souffle. Get up. Halfway, get into the tub, and as you begin to rub and scrub your bout with your version of the road to Mandalay, don't ever expect the bright side. Turns up you on a tray. Get up, get out, and meet the sun halfway. Stop hiding behind a pillow whenever the dawn looks gray. Get up. Join us next week, ladies and gentlemen. Good night.